All right, so in this video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, re-explain to you how to write shorthand electron configuration and show you how to determine valence electrons based on the shorthand configuration. And then I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the pattern that you can find or use using the periodic table very nicely for determining the number of valence electrons. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to write the shorthand for GE. And so what you have to do is you have to find your element. So here it is right here. Okay. You have to move up one row and all the way across to your noble gas. And so my noble gas in this example is going to be AR. So I'm going to put AR in brackets. And what the AR in brackets means, it's just telling you that the, assume I have the whole electron configuration of AR already written. So this means 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6 and then continue on. So that's a really nice thing about the shorthand. I don't have to write everything before that point. So I've got AR in my bracket, so I'm going to keep going. I start with K, potassium, and that starts at 4. So just count down 1, 2, 3, 4. Get your head straight around that. And you've got 4S2. Then I'm going to include all of this section right here. This is my D block. But remember, D starts one below where you would expect it to. So it's going to be 3D, you count all the way across, you've got 10 electrons, and then 4P, and GE is at 4P2. So that's my shorthand electron configuration. Now, what a valence electron is, is the electrons that are in the outermost energy level, because the closer they are to the center of the atom, the more tightly the nucleus is going to hold the electrons in. So you've got your valence electrons, which we're dealing with right now. Those are in your outermost energy level. Okay? And then you've also got your core electrons. Now your core electrons are all the other electrons that are not your valence electrons. Your core electrons don't really concern us okay? because they are not going to be involved in the chemical bonding we're going to deal with in the next unit. The core electrons stick to much more closely to the nucleus. They're not going to be involved in any kind of chemical bonding, while your valence electrons will. And that, so that's why we care about your valence electrons. So for GE, if you notice, it's got um, an atomic number of 32. We're going to figure out how many valence electrons it has, and then also how many core electrons it has. Valence is super easy. The outermost energy level is 4, because 4 is higher than 3. And so it's got two here and two here. So it's a got, it has a total of four valence electrons. Now, since it has four valence electrons, but a total of 32 electrons, that means it has 28 core electrons. Okay, so really not too bad. Sodium, sodium's right here. I'm going to write the shorthand, so I'm going to move up all the way across, all the way across, all the way across to neon. So neon goes in brackets, okay. and then I start right after neon, I keep going. So the next one is going to be 3s1, and I'm done. So super nice and easy. The cool thing about the shorthand electron configuration, you're only going to see your outermost energy level. So here, 3 is my outermost energy level. I've got one valence electron, really nice and easy. As far as core electrons are concerned, since I have a total of 11 electrons, if I have one valence electron, that tells me that I have 10 core electrons. Okay. I'm now going to do bromine right here. Okay, so I'm going to move up and all, all the way across. And its um, noble gas is AR, so I'm going to put that in brackets. And I'm going to start out. So I've got... 4s2, I've got 3d10 again, and then I've got 4p, and this time it is 5. Now, as far as valence electrons are concerned, I've got these as my outermost energy level, so I've got 2 electrons here, 5 here, so I have a total of 7 valence electrons. Since I've got 35 total electrons, what that tells me is that I have 28 core.
core electrons. 28 are core, are going to have nothing to do with any bonding or reactions that we deal with. 7 will be involved. All right. So if we write out the number of electrons, so this whole column right here has 7 valence electrons based on what we just found. GE has 4. Na has 1. What you will quickly realize is that there is a pattern. This whole column right here, this whole group, your alkali metals, all have one valence electron, always. Okay, and that gives them very unique properties that we will study a little bit later down the line. Your alkaline earth metals all have two valence electrons. We skip over the transition metals. The transition metals are funky because if you think about it, let's say they stop at, I've got, I don't know, vanadium right here. It stops at 3D3. And this was 4S2. If you notice, um, 3 is not its outermost energy level. It's in fact 4. So most, uh, most um, transition metals only have two valence electrons. They do vary though. So they'll have some really funky charges which we'll deal with a tiny bit down the road. So I won't ask you about the number of valence electrons. And if I do, it, the answer will be 2 for most of them. Okay, and we'll get to charge in the next video. So here we've got one valence electron in the first column, second group we got two, in the third we've got three, then this is four, then this will be five, six, then that's seven, and that is eight. So it's really nice if we're dealing with anything that's not a transition metal, we can automatically determine how many valence electrons it has. You can write out the electron configuration like we did here. That's totally acceptable. However, there is this pattern, and it goes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that is one of the reasons why I think the periodic table is so cool. We're just introducing the very beginning part of it. The rest will be even cooler, but that shows how useful the periodic table can be other than to tell you what elements are, what their atomic numbers are, and what their atomic masses are. And that's it for right now.